The name Great White was given to them by uh, whalers back in the 1800s when there were a lot more of these things around and they were generally a lot bigger than what you're looking at today. Okay, for those of you that can't see, Clinton's just made a cut along the uh, length of the body of the shark from just the gills in. or the uh, and also the first fin, the pectoral fin, all the way down to its anus, just to open up its abdominal cavity. Huge the muscle size, is about eight to ten centimetres thick and is exposed a very large liver. Um, as Clinton said before, the liver can be up to yep. about twenty percent of the body weight of the shark, and we've got yeah. some scales here, so we'll be able to confirm yeah, that. So for those of you that can see, what you can see, that sort of glossy, light brown, sort of orangey uh, coloured tissue is liver tissue. So this is a very fat liver. So she, pretty healthy looking shark. There's the stomach, two parts. The first sac-like part is what I'm holding in my hands here. That's the cardiac stomach there. Doesn't look like there's much in it. Um, and then there's a little piece that comes off this end of it. That looks like a little thin tube here. That looks like it should be the intestine, but that's actually um, the pyloric stomach. And that leads down to the intestine here, which is a tube. It's not very long compared to ours, which is a long skinny tube that's coiled over and over on itself inside our bodies. In a, sh in a shark, they have a, they have a very short intestine. But if we cut into that, you'll see that there's a, a scroll of tissue like a spiral inside it that goes round and round and round with a hollow tube down through the middle where the food passes. And that increases the surface area of the intestine to um, something close to what we'd have in a, in, a, in a human being or other mammals. So, so they do the same job that our intestine does but in, a, in a, a fraction of the length. And that's all to save space, keep the body streamlined. This lobate thing here, it, Near the near the back of the the back, the back of the stomach, growing on the the membranes between that hold all the organs in place. That's the pancreas. And down here, it looks like a little mini liver, sitting on the top of the intestine, and that's their spleen. All organs that we have, we come right down here to the end of the end of the end of the intestine. There's a funny little organ that we don't have. This thing's called the rectal gland and this is how the sharks excrete salt from their bodies. So I'm just removing the um, digestive tract. I'll actually cut the stomach open now to see if there's anything in there. It looks pretty empty. Things I've found in the stomach of great white sharks include eagle rays, stingrays, small species of shark, shark this size is capable of swallowing a juvenile fur seal whole. It's full of a lot of digested remains of fish. So what we'll do is we'll rinse out, remove the stomach, and we'll probably collect as many of the tapeworms as we can. We can identify any of these fish bones later on. Sharks have two uteri. So you can just see one of the uteri running along the back here. You can see it's very much undeveloped, just a thin, skinny tube. But in a mature shark, this is where they would have the, the pups would develop. And the ovary is buried in this swelling of the epigonal organ, just in here. It is illegal as of 1st of April 2007 to keep the teeth or jaws of a white shark that's caught, or any part of a white shark. International trade in white sharks is also covered by the Convention on Trade in Endangered Species. There have been around about 13 shark fatalities in New Zealand since 1840, which is a very low number internationally. It's a very uncommon event in New Zealand. You can see uh, some of the rings in the face of this vertebra, some of the growth rings. You can dry these out and count them, count them grossly like this. So what you can see are these are the arches that uh, muscles attach to. This is the face of the centrum. This is the spinal co column through here. We've found quite a lot of parasites on the skin of the shark. Small crustaceans related to crabs. And there's um, literally well, probably about a hundred of them just here under the, under the tail. So I'm just taking samples of these parasites uh, to put into the collection as well.
these scars here are from uh, probably a lot, most likely from seals that she's caught before, oh, okay. and those are tooth marks. This is so for you to touch your tooth. You notice if you um, touch the shark, everyone says the shark skin is it feels like sandpaper, but if you rub it from the nose towards the tail, it feels like silk. It's, it's very, very smooth. But if you rub it back the other way from the tail towards the head, it does feel like sandpaper. That's because the tiny teeth that cover the shark's skin, um, they all point backwards towards the tail, help it slip through the water, so they don't actually expend much energy swimming at all. Like all sharks, they replace their teeth throughout their lifetime continuously. They're attached to the skin, they're not attached to the jaw. As the teeth develop and the skin grows over the jaw, they flick up like that. And it's only the outer two rows that are ever functional, but they can have up to 300 teeth inside the jaw developing. That's the tongue there. So that's basically the gape of the shark there that you can see. So that's the size of things that can fit whole down its mouth. So small seal, small sharks. As you said before, they don't chew their food, they can't chew their food. So they either swallow chunks of it or all of it. Seals, they usually kill by one or two um, maiming bites allow the animal to bleed to death on the surface then they come back and swallow it whole and a big 4.7 meter female that was caught off a uh, female great white shark that was caught off raglan in 2005 she actually had an entire bull fur seal in her stomach swallowed head first